super early in the morning just turn my coffee i just wanted to share to you guys about something important awesome in this video we're going to be talking about the flutter and rive so rive is a super important animation tool that actually was released in the flutter's 1.12 conference of december 2019 and i made two videos prior to this one of talking about how do you create a simple animation in rive and also how do you integrate that with flutter if you have not watched that video i would highly recommend you guys to watch that video but in this video i'm actually going to be doing something little bit about this two standards so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be creating a simple login page from scratch and i'm going to animate that login page using our flutter's code and I'm going to interact with that uh, animation so it's going to be like we not just going to play a simple animation rather we're going to interact with the animation and it's going to be super fun and super cool as well so if you're ready let's get this video started because i'm just timing this up i'm making sure that i'm completing this entire video in just 20 minutes we're going to be creating the animation importing that to our flutter and and also writing code to make sure that we are interacting with the animation so it's going to be super fun and cool i'm just i'm just excited to start let's get this video started every bottle of goggles and uh maybe this also awesome so but to begin with this is how this is what we're going to be working with for this video the artboard is going to be something like this and we have ellipse we have a rectangle we have all of this crazy things going here and there so to begin with i actually started with a simple ellipse here this is two ellipses that i actually drew on the screen the first one is using the shape here you pick out the ellipse and make sure that you give a proper size for this now why i'm telling you about the artboard size very important in every single video about rife the one important mistake that a lot of people make is that they give a funny size here they don't actually do what is applicable for a device now the 480 cross 800 is applicable for all android devices so you could scale this and still work and with the same with the same dpi if you go for this it will be a little bit enlarged for an iphone so it is up to us to decide which we are going to render and which is actually applicable for that so basically start with an artboard and i've done the artboard here 480 cross 800 and jumping directly into this i'll start an ellipse that's what i drew with I drew two ellipses. One was the ellipse with eight and three hundred by three hundred, uh, which is actually nothing but a circle, and went on to draw another circle. And both of these circles are going to be placed on top of each other. Where did I arrive at this? Uh, this this is something some simple design that I drew just out of the bat. I did not actually have any anything in mind. And as soon as I went forward with this, just two draw uh, two circles and fill out with something something around the same color range, right? Color spectrum. So this one was a little bit of a purple tinge, and this one I just moved the bar so that it was a little bit of a darker shade, and we are actually drawn with the two important ellipses. Now coming back to the gradient that I drew here. Now in the previous two videos we did not see about importing assets here, but in this video we have to import an asset. Now I actually don't, I did not go for any like a Photoshop or a, a Illustrator to draw this gradient. This is a simple gradient, right? So I just went into the Google and typed image gradient PNG. first i searched for any images that are actually applicable make sure that you do this properly because a lot of these images are copyrighted images but i found this uh, simple uh, tool called as an angrytools.com which is something on the internet so you just go here draw your own gradient and download this as an image and that's what i did again here i downloaded that image i imported that using the import tag here import it the import and i are ready to import that uh, gradient here and place it in your artboard now the 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 key challenge here is that when you have a very huge gradient the challenge is that you will actually have to place little bit of change play a little bit of the opacity of the gradient so that it matches what we are expecting and we are also ready to go over to the next one so these these three are very simple right and we are going to be jumping to the next part which is nothing but the login and the sign up button now the login button you could directly sense that it's a simple rectangle again here so just a u rectangle draw two rectangles one below the other make sure that they are properly aligned this is something that i have been talking about for last three videos with the rive and flutter always align them properly width and height should be proper do not mix up with the width and height because it's a very very important part of the any animation that you do draw the rectangle two rectangles here but with respect to rive there is no way to actually draw or write a text into the Uh, artboard there is nothing to actually do a text writing or just type like you are doing it in your photoshop your illustrator or even with anything with respect even your adobe premiere all of these actually let you take and write text directly into the framework but this does not have this is does not it is not going to help us in writing any text 
So what did I do? I am not going to tell you guys that. Just kidding. I just went into Canva. Canva is a very so free tool that I use for a lot of things. And you can just go here, click on to create your own size. Just click on custom dimensions and just give this dimension that you gave here. So this is very important again. Mess up with these dimensions, you would have either a huge text or a small text, and that is not something that you you, are, you want to expect from this. Just give your custom dimensions. This is nothing but 251 by 65. When you give 251 by 65, so the width is 251, and when you give 65, it is automat automatically going to create a board for you and also automatically suggest different templates for you. So this is the templates that it suggested for me. And this scrolled up and down, I still found something that I like. Nothing but this is the font that I like, but I changed the color and everything from here. And I just did that. I downloaded two files from that. One is the login file and another is the uh, sign up file. So sign up file, it's named as login one, but yeah, login file and sign up file, two files that I downloaded. I imported back that into the artboard and made sure that it is coming under the rectangle. So that when you move the rectangle, this one also is going to move. Always lock your, uh, as soon as done, lock your both your rectangles so that you are not disturbing that when you're changing the other things. Now, we just did three simple things straight off the bat. But how did I do this one? This one is something that looks, that, that looks a little different from what we have been doing, right? Now, the next one is using the pen tool that is actually available again. Just click on V and when you click on V, you will have a little different things here. So, then click on V. You, you would have a pointer like this that goes around here and you can just click on like this and you just come back here and just do this things like that and as you can see it is drawing a shape for me like this and that's what I did again here I drew a shape from here to here and here to here here to here here to here and just close the shape back up again and that gave me this little bit of a not not so much of a direct polygon but some crazy polygon that actually look a little bit different from all the different shapes that are actually perfect shapes here so this is a circle it's a perfect shape rectangle are a perfect shape simple gradient and i just did this simple something that is against the uh, perfect shapes so that it looks a little bit odd and also good on the screen this is the simple draw art board so i do all these things arrange them all in place and time to animate our art board right simple as that now i'm going to be talking about three different animations because like i told you at the start of this video we're going to be talking about uh, something other than what we've been doing so far. We have been using the Flare Actor in inside the Flutter Flare plugin, but in this video, we're going to be talking about the Smart Flutter plugin, which is nothing but we're going to be using a little bit complex animations. We're going to be controlling these complex animations uh, through our Flutter code. So for that, I actually have three different animations to play. One is the intro animation that will play as soon as the app loads. For example, the user is the first time opening that, and it's going to load this this animation for me here. Now, how can I let me show it properly to you guys. Let me show it properly. Uh, yeah. All right. So this is the animation that's going to load for the user when he plays for the first time. Awesome, right? So it's going to be that this is the animation that's going to load for the user. Now, how am I going to animate this in the first part of the intro? Always make sure that everything is properly aligned, everything is properly timed, and also make sure that you are not messing up with a lot of different things at the same time. So to, to begin with, I'm bringing in the ellipse and I'm also bringing in the gradient into the square. Now, how am I going to do that? The thing, simple thing is to um, do a simple animation of the position here. So at the start of the position, as you can see, the gradient is nothing but a zero. Let me uncheck that. Okay. So the, uh, at the start of the position, as you can see, the gradient is having opacity of zero. And the gradient is just going to come into, come into the picture. But the two ellipses that we have here are actually at the position 399.82 and as you can see it comes into the board. It's coming into the board and we're actually moving that. So how am I going to move that? Just lock it here and bring it here and lock it back again. So we are locking the two uh, ellipses back into the position and we have a simple animation of the ellipse coming into the picture and uh, a gradient coming into the picture again. It's a simple opacity change. Now time to move our both rectangles. At the start of the at the start of the animation, the rectangles at the bottom, like you can see, it's not showing up because of opacity is zero. So just set the opacity to zero and also move it to the bottom. And as the animation begins, move it slowly back into the position. So I'm locking it right around this part here. So as you can see, I'm locking it around this part here. And that's that's the uh, end of the animation. So this is going to be ending the animation for me here. And that is the whole point of this thing. Now, the, as you end the animation here, 
we are actually left with only one more shape to animate which is nothing but the new shape that we drew now as you can see start of the animation with the opacity of zero and it's somewhere at the top but as it moves into the picture it is slowly rotating and it is just fixing at this position here so this is fixing up at 15 degrees but at the start of the position it was actually around zero degrees so zero degrees and zero opacity to 15 degrees and one opacity we have got this smooth simple animation that is happening and the key to actually doing something like this is to make sure that you're timing them really really well so i'm doing everything at a zero like 48th position 48th second and something at 45th second and immediately after that 47th second 46th second so everything is like that you are timing everything and that's going to make a lot of difference in actually animating the entire thing now this is a simple intro animation that we did so the whole thing took me around 30 minutes to do so that like it's very very simple and jumping to the login animation login animation is nothing complex as you can see it will do just that it will do the login blink which is nothing but changing with the one opacity goes to zero around something as you can see the it goes to zero uh, if we can bring that into position uh, and it comes back to one so that's a simple zero one opacity if you can see here um, that is a simple login animation and similarly for uh, sign up as well i didn't make it too complex i did the same thing i applied the same logic here and it a linear transition zero one zero so one zero one and we are very much ready with the entire uh, animation export that as usual export that as a binary file and we are very much going to be using this in our application now i've imported that in the application make sure that you put it inside your assets forget about this this from the previous video let me delete it not required and go back to pubspec.yaml and now for the important import import your smart flat plugin the smart flat plugin i am not really sure who made it but this is a great plugin uh, extremely useful making use of the flutter flare actor and the flare controls which is part of the basic uh, flare uh, flutter plugin right make use of this smart flare import that in your dependencies and come back to your assets and add your assets login.flr as well these are two important things that you have to do make your packages that packages get you do that and come back to your main dot dot file now this is where you're going to be importing our smart flare dot dot file so this is the most important file that you're going to import and you're going to directly jump into i've just created a simple stateful widget called as a splash screen and uh, this is the home my app widget so this is the basic stuff again and we're going to be making use of the first important i'm going to be taking you guys through what exactly happens line by line and we're going to be directly using the smart flare actor plugin the smart flare actor class is going to take two important ones the height and the width are very very important now as i told you guys this is this 480 by 800 is going to be making a you may it's going to play a very important role when you are actually going into this smart smart flare actor plugin and the primary reason is that because when you are actually rendering the smart flare actor the important one to work here is that there is going to be a different dpis that you have to consider you could run it for your uh, tablet you could run it on a bigger bigger uh, android phone and that's the main thing why we are requiring this height and width because the scaling has to be proper now i did i did give initially a simple 800 by 480 i just hard coded the values but i did not want to do that now what if the size changes and my um, this one breaks i don't i don't want this one to break so what happens is that when you're actually giving a value of 800 by 480 now it, everything looks cool as long as you are shrinking the size of the app now what happens when you are actually expanding the size of the app what smart flare actor plug plugin does at the background is that it's going to directly uh, it's going to directly contain the entire thing to whatever maximum size we're giving but i don't want to do that when i when i want to go bigger i also want the the flr file to grow bigger up to some point where it go, it's going to pixelate after that and break so when i want to give the dynamic range of height and weight height and width i made use of the media query uh, media query and got the width and the height of the screen or the height and width of the device that i'm rendering the application on so when you do this this is going to give a little bit of a dynamic control over the size and height of the entire uh, the entire flr file that has to be played and that's what i did here so smart flare actor height and width so i just put this definitely in my blog article you can definitely check that out in the description below but for now this is how the height and width are going to be present as so height and width just give these two files and we're going to be playing our first assets assets from the asset we're going to be playing the flr file 
Now this FLR file is going to do the intro animation like I've put here it's the starting animation is the intro this name has to be exactly case sensitive so case sensitive at this one here so make sure that you're giving this process pro properly as I've given its intros I capital so all of that is just take care of all of that now these are these are the simple things that this also present as part of the flare actor but what does the smart flare actor do and the smart flare actor is very very smart again so what is a smart flare actor is that it's going to be making use of this concept called as active areas and this active areas are nothing but simple different defined predefined active areas where you as where you know that that is going to be some form of action that user is going to do for example if you see here these are not just these are just simple design areas that is nothing going to be useful user is not going to click on that and that's nothing is going to happen but when you come to your login and your sign up page sign up buttons these we know are buttons but we did not define them as the native button rather we have defined it inside our FLR file now the what the uh, active area is going to do is that we can define where this login button is present through our rectangle here and once that rectangle is defined it will automatically wait for any user interaction around that rectangle place and when there is a user interaction it is going to assume that there is a button click there and it's going to do whatever animation we want to do or we, are, we can do anything we want to like any action we want to do from there on so that's just too simple uh, the use case of actually using an active area i've actually rebuilt the entire application so that i can show you guys uh, what happens uh, there's a simple attribute called as a debug area which i can set it to true and you can see for yourself that very clearly what happens when you uh, when the application is built on so the application is playing right now and it's building up the entire thing as you can see the FLR file is playing, the animation is also playing but if you, if you could notice there was this simple debug area that was present here now when I click on this area it is going to give me the first one it's, it's going to play the plugin tab it's going to do the animation also because I'm playing the animation here and we are actually getting the login tab which is nothing but the on tab the area that's present now when I click on the other directions outside this place nothing is happening because I've not defined them as active areas that's a super important and also very very useful use case of doing something complex the interacting with the FLR file now that is the same for sign up as well that's what I've done I've defined the rectangle space for sign up again and if you can set it to deep up true we can see this as well so we can see that when the user is playing this that is this this now turn turn right so this is the debug area for that now usually you do not have to give a debug area for everything just for the purpose of debugging if you are actually very sure that the rectangle is present properly you could do that and I'll just play the entire thing again from scratch so that the animation is clean and everything is done for this entire video. Awesome, the animation is playing. We have the two simple, simple things and you click on login. It's saying that login tab. So you could do any change from here. You could open your new login page from here and similarly sign up. So you click on sign up and you click on sign up. The sign up tab is also coming up and that's the entire uh, use of active area. So the definition is very simple. You are we're going to be calling the smart flare actor and passing the height, passing the width and the file name wherever the file is present as it's from here and the starting animation is very 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 important so always have a starting animation give it the give it a name again do not leave it as untitled and go to the next one which is active areas you could define a list of active areas that you want to define there are again there is a relative active area there is a very simple simple active area which is nothing but uh, you are actually defining which part of the screen with respect to the relative position so relative active area is very useful because when you when you scale up and down you could still uh, this will still work so that is the main use of that when you click on login and saying login when you click on sign up it's doing the sign up action sign up simple animation for sign up and that's the entire use case of the smart flare actor there are again super cool things that is possible with your smart flare actor i'll continue making on videos with respect to that and flare and uh, currently called as rife and uh, let me meet on something with super cool animations in the next video and then it's Parak Pesor. hope this video is informative if you found this video informative you know what to do smash that subscribe button also like this video share this video do all the crazy stuff let me meet in the next video on friends Parak Pesor.